Today we're going to discuss how to perform a lamb post-mortem. This can only be performed on lambs that are less than one week old to get an accurate description of whether they've died of dystochia, stillbirth, mismothering or exposure and starvation. To start with what you need is a container with water, a sharp knife and you can also use pliers. This is an unborn lamb. This lamb died in distress. As you can see, it is covered in a green material. This is known as the meconium, and lambs only release this during birth when they are in distress. The first thing we do when we look at lambs that have been born is to have a look at their color, whether they've been licked on one side or both sides from mum, and to look at their feet. When lambs are born, they have very soft material on the end of their feet, so they don't damage mum on the way out. This lamb still has the nice soft on the end of its toes, meaning it's never walked. This lamb has not been licked, meaning that mum did not attend to it. Its head is not swollen, which means it has no signs of dystochia. This lamb is from a set of twins. You can do it yourself and record any information you want to written on the lamb. So now we're going to analyze the outside of the lamb. There's no obvious signs of swelling of the head or eyes or face. This lamb has walked, it has dirt and hard hooves. You should analyze, also analyze the outside of the sheep for any signs of predation. This lamb has a wound on its side so it may have been bitten. This lamb has been frozen and I apologize, but it did not defrost in time due to the cold weather. This lamb still has its umbilicus all dried out, therefore it is less than a week old, so our analysis will be able to tell what's happened to it. First step is to cut in between the front legs. Always looking for any signs of bleeding or bruising. Bleeding and bruising will only occur when the heart is still pumping. So in this case, the lamb has bruising around its neck, meaning it could have been damaged during lambing, during birth. As you can see, there's significant dark areas along the neck, which can be a sign of dystochia or trouble birthing. The lamb has been bruised recently. Our next step is to get everything open. So we cut down the back legs as well. Unless you've had sub-zero temperatures, you will not find ice in that lamb's abdomen. Unlike this lamb. Okay. To open up the chest cavity, you have two options. You can use your knife to go where the ribs join, or you can use a set of secateurs or hoof clips to go in between.
newborns are born with what's called brown fat and this can last with them any, from anywhere to four to seven days. Brown fat is a different kind of fat, it is a heat producing fat, there's easily accessible energy. It is accumulated around newborns, heart and kidneys. So one of the best ways to analyse as to whether your lamb has died of starvation is to have a look at the amount of brown fat that still has within it. In this case, even though it's frozen, we cannot see any brown fat lying in this heart. We know that these lambs were found curled up next to their mother, so there's a chance that they didn't feed. It may have been because the mother had no milk. For people who have post-mortem sheep before, you may notice what you think is an accessory organ just here. This is called the thymus. This reduces as newborns age. So it's quite obvious in lambs, and by the time they're weaners, it's quite small, and as adults, it's insignificant. So we've analyzed the heart. There's no signs of brown fat. It means the lambs probably died of starvation. We can have a look at the kidneys as well, which are located in the abdomen around the back. And again, there is no sign of brown fat around the kidneys. The bladder is empty, so it hasn't produced any urine. And we're going to cut open the stomach. And even though there's ice in here, there's no milk clots. So all three of these factors, the lack of brown fat around the heart and kidneys, no milk clot in the stomach, and no urine in the bladder, all point towards that this lamb died of starvation. Another thing to analyze is signs of infection. So the most common point of infection for newborns is through their umbilicus. And you can see pus within the abdomen near where the umbilicus enters. You can also see signs of abscesses or lesions on the liver. So in this case, the liver has lovely smooth edges, so there's no signs of swelling or lesions on the liver. Pneumonia is not common in young lambs or in newborn lambs, but you have a look at the lungs. And even though we know this lamb has walked, what you can also do with lungs, this is why we have water, Chop off a piece of lung and put it into water. If it floats, it means they've taken a breath. If it sinks, it means they've never taken a breath. There's no air in the lungs. Okay, so our last step is to get the head. And you don't have to remove the head, but for this video I will, so we can see what I'm going to be looking at. So you want to have a look at the brain and see if there's any potential damage occurring during birth. This can sometimes be a reason as to why they've never taken a drink. Or another way to analyze if there's any signs of dystochia. So simply remove the, head, remove the skin off the top of the skull.
Get your pliers. And slowly and carefully snip around the top of the head to remove the skull to get access to the brain. Now if you are investigating what you suspect to be an abortion outbreak and you are pregnant or trying to get pregnant, stay away. If your partner is pregnant or trying to get pregnant, make sure that you completely clean and disinfect yourself and do not let them touch your clothing afterwards as there are certain diseases that cause abortions, especially abortion storms in sheep that are zoonotic to humans and will cause abortions or miscarriages in humans. Carefully run your fingers around the inside of it to remove the brain. The brain should not normally look like this. This has significant hemorrhaging, so bruising on the brain, which is another sign of dystochia. This potentially could be the reason as to why these lambs did not, this lamb did not have a drink. So as a summary, based on this analysis, our lamb had, no, had minimal brown fat on the heart, Little to no brown fat in the kidneys, no signs of milk clot in the stomach, no urine in the bladder, and some bruising on its brain, and significant bruising on its neck. So this lamb potentially has had a traumatic birth and has not suckled milk. The two main reasons that it may not suckled milk is the trauma from the birth meant it couldn't stand up or its mother did not produce milk. Or there is also a third option, that this ewe is still pregnant, she stole the lambs due to her strong mothering instincts and had not yet produced any milk.